Hi, I'm a personal trainer and I'm also trained in anatomy and physiology, nutrition, and one of the GP exercise referral professionals. Just to explain that, um, health professionals in the United Kingdom are called general practitioners and if a client is obese, has diabetes, lower back pain, then they have a list of exercise professionals that they can recommend the client goes to see. And in my studies of diabetes and obesity, it was very interesting to relate the science behind why we get fat. In fact, when I tell most of my clients the reason they get fat, uh, they think it's a very simple process and if they reverse the process, obviously they're gonna lose that weight. So I thought I'd just put a little video out on YouTube to let you into the secret of how easy it is to lose weight once you understand how fat storage happens in the first place. Okay, now, most of this science is taken from Guyton's Medical Physiology book. This is the textbook that most healthcare professionals in the States and Canada and Britain refer to. And I'm going to go to the chase, cut to the chase first, and say that in the absence of insulin, the body will burn fat. Now that is the key fact you need to remember. You cannot burn fat if there is insulin in your system. So let's explain why there is insulin in your system and why that means you can't burn fat. So obviously we reverse the process, take the insulin out of our system, we're gonna burn fat. But let's explain why that happens in the first place. Okay, your bloodstream has a certain amount of blood sugar that will give you energy or blood glucose. Most people call it blood sugar. And when we eat, the amount of sugar and glucose in the blood goes up. Now this is toxic to the body. We don't want too much energy. We don't want too much glucose or sugar, however you want to look at it. So the pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin. And insulin's job is to lower the blood glucose level in your bloodstream to make sure it is a safe level. Then insulin shuttles that energy, because that's basically what it is, into your muscles for immediate use, if ever you need it. For instance, for a workout, walking, talking, thinking, everything. It will then take the rest and store it in your liver. Or at least that's the principle, because there should really be no other excess. Unfortunately, in the Western diet, and especially diets full of carbohydrates and sugars, there is even more excess. So there's only one place that can be stored, and that is fat. Fat is the storage of energy. That's at its most basic. So we want to burn that fat but the body will not choose to burn that fat because we've got some in our muscles ready for walking, talking and doing workouts and some in our liver ready as a backup. So why would it burn the fat? It won't do that. And that is why Guyton's medical physiology book says the absence of insulin is the key to fat burning. So we don't want to keep eating lots of sugary things, lots of things with carbs. You want something that's going to make sure the insulin isn't spiking as very low level of sugar and glucose running around your bloodstream which is why recently the news has been full of people saying that a ketogenic diet that's a diet that's low in sugar and carbohydrates but high in fats and protein or moderate amount of proteins they're actually really good for you in fact until the 1950s this was the medical view as well but then you've got to look at the big boys like pepsi and coke and people that produce commercial carbohydrates and the farming industry and all that money out there and you've got to look at who does the studies and who's saying hey maybe we should eat carbs so anyway uh, have a think about your diet have a think about the insulin that is being secreted and the fact that you can only fat burn when there's no insulin in your body and you decide what sort of food would probably be the best to eat